Hey guys, as promised from the um, vote over on Instagram, my first like real YouTube video is going to be a gear video, a gear tour video. Um, I'm just assuming that what you want to see are most of the guitars. I think you can cover pedals and amps and all that stuff in a different video. So today I'm going to go over all of my guitars. Um, <clears throat> quick disclaimer before we begin, I have a bit of a cold, so my voice is not at the best of them for the moment. Uh, but I didn't want you guys waiting longer for this video, so let's just go. First guitar I have on my lap here is a LTD Alexi Laiho 600 series signature model. As you can see, it's based on the Randy Rhodes style guitar that he played during his career. It has a Floyd Rose 1000, I believe. Um, has single volume, no push pull. A passive EMG HC pickup. Uh, 24 frets, all black or black chrome hardware, I should say. Uh, love this guitar, I keep it tuned to uh, D standard. Uh, one thing I do not enjoy about this guitar is the fret markers. The white fret markers here on this grey mother of pearl inlay makes it incredibly hard to see. So one modification I probably will do to this guitar is to give it, uh, to give it some lumen lace down the road. Because I really enjoy this guitar and I like playing it. Um, but then again, I struggle a bit by reading the fret markers. I know that's just maybe a noob thing to, newbie thing to say or just personal preference, but I don't like working harder than I really have to. So if I can drop in some lumen lace to make my life easier, I think that's probably the solution. So first guitar, LTD, Alexi 600 series. Next guitar. Sticking with LTD and Alexi Leo, which is, as you probably can tell, one of my favorite guitarists of all time. Here's another 600 series LTD Alexi Leo signature. This one I believe is called Whitey, and the other one you saw earlier was Blackie. They're hidden off camera so you can't see them. Um, this one, exactly the same as the other one, but it's a couple of slight differences. This has uh, solid black details, all black hardware, same stuff as the other one, single volume, and this is a little bit loose. EMG HC pickups, uh, white bus saw inlays, black hardware, locking nut, everything. But this one has a cavity carved out here, or a relief, I think you call it. I'm not good with terminology, just call it whatever I think it's called. Uh, this is a Korean made one, the other one was also Korean made. Um, I don't know why. This has to carve out, and the other one doesn't. Doesn't really matter. This one I keep uh, keep tuned to drop C. I think I have to do a setup video on this one because uh, this one has piano wires for strings. They're incredibly heavy gauge, and uh, I really don't enjoy that. They were put on as more of a experiment, but uh, I think I'm gonna do a setup video of this one and change strings and show you guys how to adjust furoses and stuff. So, second guitar, LTD 600. Last of the LTDs. Oh shit, gotta turn down the volume here a bit. There we go. Last of the LTDs. This is a EX307 7 th string explorer style guitar. This is a made in China model, but um, I honestly believe that these are a fucking bargain. Uh, if you ever can find one of these on the second hand market and uh, you're out there for a 7 string metal machine, you, you can't absolutely go wrong with this. Uh, it has EMG, active pickups, it has a uh, 3 way tone, volume, everything you need, nothing you don't. Neck plays like butter, straight as narrow, and yeah. It's everything you want and nothing you don't. Uh, this guitar though isn't mine. Uh, this belongs to uh, a friend of mine called uh, Paul. He plays in a little band called uh, The Federation. Uh, he lent me this and I am 
seriously considering not letting him have it back. Um, probably not wise of me to show it in this video because he might see it, but uh, maybe I'll just uh, never talk about this guitar again. And then whenever he asks me about it, I'll just change the subject, like, how's your foreskin? Yeah. So, yeah. Chinese made LTD, nothing to be afraid of. CNCs don't care which country they are in. Fantastic guitar. Sounds like a champ. Next guitar. Yes, while we're uh, on the subject of Paul, um, this is also his guitar. Fucking shit. There we go, forgot to turn on the volume again. As you can see, I'm new to this, so don't judge me too hard. Well, this is also Paul from the Federation's guitar. <clears throat> he gave me this uh, to do whatever the fuck I want with it. Um, it has some sort of Duncan design pickups, I don't know what these are called. Uh, they look like ish humbuckers. To be honest, I absolutely hate how this style of pickup looks, because for me it looks like something you would find on the back of a General Electric uh, fridge from the 1950s. Um, and dip switches. Only time I can accept a dip switch on a musical instrument is on a vintage synthesizer. This looks like somebody wanted a synthesizer, but they mainly wanted to play guitar, so they just added these for looks. Um, since I am in charge of this guitar, uh, it's going to be a build series on it coming right after this video. We're going to pull everything apart, uh, take off everything. He has given me permission to do whatever I want. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Only thing I have been told is that he wants a fixed bridge, like a tunomatic or something. Get rid of the Bixby, remove it all completely. New pickguard on this side because the dip switches, they are going. Want a regular toggle switch with push pulls for coil split and single coil, single coil humbucker setup. And also locking tuners and maybe we'll give it a new nut. nut. I have been talking to uh, Bare Knuckle and seeing if they can figure out something cool to put in it here. But if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. As I said, this is a Schecter Ultra 3, which he has used and abused for years now um, but this guitar is not gonna look like this for that much longer so no re point really talking too much more about it other than uh, it's gonna be coming up in a future series stay tuned for that next guitar yeah so next guitar this is probably one of the oldest guitars that i have from my own personal collecting uh, even though this one has a little, little bit of a story behind it. This is a pre-Fender uh, made in Japan, Jackson SL3. Uh, back in 2007 and 8, I played in a black metal band and uh, one guy from all the other bands that we used to hang out with had this guitar and I bought it off him at a party when I was drunk. Um, it was all black back then uh, I wanted to do something like custom and cool with it, so I had it shipped off to some random dude who said he can paint, paint real good skulls on it. And the paint job of this guitar is shit. It's absolutely horrible. Um, he masked off with the thickest tape I can imagine exist, so you can feel like a sharp edge where the paint is. Um, it started flaking everywhere, like in the middle here was a big blister that went really fast and uh, I haven't played it that much down here since I have been playing leads. Um, so yeah, paint off is horrible. Uh, Japanese made licensed flood roses. The Jackson flood roses are actually pretty good. Um, it now has a dime bucker, I'll come back to that in a second. It has a five-way toggle. Tone volume, locking, 24 fret, plays like butter. Uh, <clears throat> I actually sold this guitar back in 2012, uh, thinking I didn't need it anymore. Yeah. And uh, maybe four years ago, I saw it back on the used market on the internet, and they, they were asking way less than what I sold it for, so I bought it. And the guy I bought it back from told me that he thought that this was a sticker. That was really 
really on there. Um, but no. So um, I'm considering either keeping it as it is because it's a little bit of a fun story and has a little bit of sentimental value for me, or maybe just grinding down everything and making like a natural burst finish or something. Or I'll send it to another friend of mine that I know can paint stuff and you'll see one of his uh, creations uh, later on. So yeah, Pre-Fender SL3, fantastic guitar. You can't go wrong with, go wrong with these, uh, these guys. Uh, I'm telling you, if you have the chance to pick one of these up used, do it. You'll not regret it, uh, especially if you like the HSS configuration. They sound amazing. Uh, yeah, old beater. Sticking with Jackson, this is an uh, Indonesian made Jackson Warrior, I believe the shape is called. This has uh, active EMGs, Floyd Rose Special, three way toggle, um, volume tone, all the jazz. And it's almost in mint condition. Uh, only thing missing is uh, one of the locking screws for the strings. Um, that wasn't on the guitar when I bought it. I got it for around. I think it was 150, 200 bucks used, and uh, for that price, this guitar is an absolute steal. Um, I really don't play it as much as I should. Don't really know why. The neck is very special on this guitar. I don't have any other guitars that have a neck that feels the same way. If you can imagine, you have the fretboard here, and on the sides of the fret or on the neck I should say, you have a bow and then it's completely flat and then a bow again. So it, I don't know what that shape is called but it's really pronounced on this guitar, it's like... Yeah, it feels almost dead flat, it's like playing like a rounded plank, it's a very strange thing. I haven't had any other guitars that had this kind of neck. And I didn't try it out or anything before I bought it, I just... Oh, it looks looked cool. Um, Maybe I should get it. And uh, can't say I regret buying it. The only thing I can regret about this guitar is that I don't play it, really. Uh, as, as I said, I don't know why. It's a real fast neck. It uh, does everything I need a guitar to do. Um, I'm considering maybe blocking the, the Floyd on this one and using it as more of a heavy down-tuned chugging machine. Having so many guitars with Flow Rose, I think I could sacrifice maybe one uh, to put it as a real shredder, uh, real riff machine, I should say. Alright, next guitar is this uh, Schecter C1 She Devil with a pair of Dancing Devils on a 12, 12 fret, which I think is nice. This is probably one of the more metal guitars that uh, Schecter have with uh, not too much going on on the fretboard. Usually they have like Roman numerals and all that stuff, which I really think is cool, but this one is toned down a bit. Um, nice combination of black chrome and regular chrome hardware. Um, chrome chrome knobs with uh, red diamonds in them. I think it's a nice touch. Suits the guitar. Three-way switch. Active uh, Duncan design pickups, which I have nothing against. Uh, for the kind of distorted music, you can probably imagine that I play uh, any difference in a boutique uh, mic would not show through. So I don't care what <coughs> kind of pickups they are, as long as the, the signal is clean and they sound good, I'm all down for that. Tuners are actually amazing. Um, they're not locking tuners, but this guy holds tuning like nothing else. It's uh, Grover tuners. I use this probably more than any other guitar when I'm practicing scales and leads and learning new material just because I know that I can put this guitar in any tuning I want and it will stay there for the duration of my practice. So for me this is a excellent workhorse. Uh, neck through construction again, I am a sucker for neck through. Again I can't explain why. Um, because I have several guitars now that are not neck through and they work just as well. Yeah, amazing guitar, Diamond Series, C1, She Devil, highly recommend it if you are looking for a cheap beater that will do everything and will do it well, 
try one of these. All right, this is probably the most metal thing you'll ever see. Um, it's a tele style body with a seven string strat style neck and from a brand you probably never heard of. Uh, <clears throat> this is by a band, band, a brand that actually endorses me and it's uh, made in Russia. Please don't hate me, no politics here. No, I've actually been uh, talking with them and uh, working with them since before the war and it's a fucking travesty. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that, uh, not going into any politics here. But we're gonna go into this guitar because this is by far the heaviest guitar that I own. I have no idea what it's made of. I'm guessing um, Soviet era tanks. Uh, I've dubbed this one the T-34 just because it weighs a ton. Uh, the neck is like a baseball bat cut in half. It's insanely thick. Um, and it plays absolute, absolutely fantastic, you know? If you use this for an entire gig, you might have to have your arm surgically removed, but that's okay, that's a small price to pay for a classic design made for metal. Tuners are no idea what they are, they stay in tune. Pickups, there are um, the brand's own pickups, and the brand is called Kononiken. I think it's pronounced like that. I'm not um, familiar with the Russian language, I can tell Russian and Polish apart, for instance. Again, sorry about that. I think it's pronounced Kononiken, and they also make their own pickups. Uh, all guitars by Canonican are limited to 200 for each model. Um, so this is number 86. Um, yeah, it's a real, real killing machine of a guitar. It's insanely good. I have nothing bad to say about it, really. It stays in tune, it's heavy, it's perfect in every way. <laughs> I really enjoy this guitar. Um, not saying that just because they are endorsing me with guitars, but uh, I can generally stand by this. If you find one of these used, get it. They also now have a new 7-string model out that I'm hoping to get. Which, if it's anything like this, is gonna be just amazing. Yeah, next guitar. Alright, sticking with the Canonic Gang guitars. This is a Breed 30 model. It has a textured top, which feels really nice. String through construction, single pickup, tone volume, and black block inlays. This also, I... It's a reversed Strat headstock, obviously, and I think it's a Jaguar style offset body. And again, no idea what kind of wood it is, but it's really, really, really heavy. Um, this one... I absolutely love to play because of its simplicity. I am a sucker for single pickup guitars with preferably just volume. Um, it's something about it that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I like it easy and simple. This is a guitar that I 100% trust. Uh, it stays in tune, live and in studio. Though I am going to give it a little bit of a drawback for the tuners. They are they stay in tune once you get them up there, but I don't know what the ratio of these tuners are, but it's uh, a bit fiddly to get in tune. As soon as as it is in tuning, it stays there. So this guitar I'm actually considering buying some better like shoulder type locking tuners and putting on other part from that. Um, nothing really much to say about it. It's a passive pickup, one pickup design offset guitar. Neck feels nice, it's uh, like any other Strat style C profile neck. It feels good, does what it's supposed to. Yeah, nothing really more to say about it really. Next guitar, wrapping up my Canonican guitars. Uh, this is the Breed 32. As you can see, there's a little bit more going on here. This is a tele style body, Strat style neck, black. Uh, inlays, 
Licensed Flodos. Um, humbucker, humbucker, single coil construction, which I don't see that often. It's a really cool guitar. It plays really great. Uh, only thing I will give this minus points for is that uh, when I got it, one of the screws for the tremolo was stripped. I was changing strings on it when it arrived because they probably have been sitting a bit, the, the strings that came with this guitar. And one of the screws here was uh, stripped, so I had to change that out and uh, change um, the saddle. Luckily I have some parch Floyd Rose lying around, so it wasn't that big of an issue. But thing is with this brand is that they don't produce any high-end... High-end will probably be the wrong term, but they don't produce any expensive guitars. They, all their guitars are less than a thousand dollars. So somewhere compromises probably would have been made, you know, you can't put a $450 Floyd Rose in a thousand dollar guitar. Or you can, but in this case, this uh, I believe is six or seven hundred bucks. So half of the price of the guitar going just into the tremolo is probably a little bit steep. So it's a licensed Floyd Rose. As I said, one of these were broken when I got it, changed it, haven't had any problem with it since tuning stability is great. Took a little bit of a setup, I have to admit that, it was a little bit of fiddly and worky to get it to work. I uh, had to put some additional springs in the back, but that solved every issue I had with it. Uh, this guitar I actually use a lot in the band that I'm playing now, it's a cover band. I play like 80s rock and roll and stuff. And I just enjoy the color, it's, like, it's not neon green, but it's not that far off. Again, pickups, there are Canonican's own pickups. I have no idea what model they're called or what name they have. All I know is that they sound good. They do what they're supposed to. <sighs> yeah, this is probably the lightest of all the Canonica and guitars. That's, but that's not saying much. They all are incredibly heavy. So, yeah. Last of the Canonica and guitars. Breed 32. Fantastic guitar. This... It's another guitar that's not mine. This actually is a guitar that I bought as a gift for my wife. She's a <coughs> metalhead, just as me, but she's also a die-hard blues fan. And especially uh, Steve Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix and uh, Walter Trout. Those are legends of her. I bought this because she was um, romanticizing over the uh, Jimi Hendrix signature that has a similar finish to this. This is a vintage signature series. It's not a vintage guitar, it's vintage guitars as the brand. Vintage. And this is a Thomas Blug signature. Has the standard configuration for a Stratocaster. Single volume, double tone, five-way switcher, tremolo that works really good. And uh, some sort of relic. Um, I'm guessing that it's based on one of Thomas Blue's guitars, I don't know. Um, it came with uh, all rusty hardware, which adds to the part of the look. Wilkinson pickups, which actually for cleans sounds really really good. Uh, as I previously said, as soon as I throw any sort of distortion on the pickups, you probably could not tell them apart. You could probably tell a single coil from a humbucker, but I think it stops at that. Um, yeah, this guitar is actually insanely fun to play. Uh, she got this as a beginner's guitar from me, as a gift. And um, I put 08 strings on it, so the strings are insanely light. So we're doing like Gilmore stuffs and bends and that, this works pretty well. But I'm guessing uh, Gilmore, he probably plays with like construction wire for strings. I, I bet he uses really heavy gauges. I actually like this guitar so much that I'm actually considering getting one of another one of these for myself. Not this exact model. I'm thinking about getting their V6 Stratocaster in uh, Surfer Blue. I really like it. It's a really pretty guitar. And these are also not that expensive. This is one of the few guitars I ever bought brand new and this was, I believe, $699, $700-ish? I'm just rounding 
up prices here because you don't equivalate from Norwegian Kronesh till um, to um, dollars that well, but it's in a 650 700 range, I believe. You can get him a Toman if you want. Gear from Music also have him, I believe. Yeah. Last of the Strat style guitars. 10 out of 10. Would buy again. Next guitar. Yes. This is my one of only two acoustic guitars that I've ever owned. Uh, this is an Ovation Thunderbolt from. I believe they were made for a short period of time between the summer of 1988 and the summer of 1989 so maybe a year or so in production it has a really good preamp and a really good uh, electrical system it sounds huge uh, when thrown into an amplifier or into a recording session uh, on its own it's I don't know it's kind of a love-hate thing with the Ovation and plastic round backs guitars in general they have a really like steely sound, like <laughs> obviously not in tune, but um, they have a sharp and kind of their own sound. I bought it because I did not want an acoustic guitar that looked like an uh, end table from the 60s. Uh, that's one thing I actually miss with acoustic guitars. It's like, why do they have to look like you're walking into a vintage furniture, furniture store? Can't they be a little bit? Be a bit flashy. Can't they have some cool colors, some burst finishes, and no, not like your typical grandpa burst. I'm not talking about that. Like maybe a silver burst or a blue to red burst or something like that. I would love to see that. This guitar, for me, perfect acoustic. Um, it's light, holds tuning really, really well. It's old. It's not beat up. I love the design. The only thing that I absolutely do not like about this guitar is where the jack is located. Right here. And for me, the way I carry the guitar when I have it standing up means that the jack needs to be an angled jack, otherwise it's just kicking into my stomach or my thigh or something. And I've broken one jack on the guitar and one cable on this guitar just because of the location. So that's something I really don't like. Um, yeah, other than that, this is a fantastic little old relic. Also like the kind of banana headstock-ish thing going on there uh, compared to the other Ovations that usually has like that leaf shape going up. But yeah, this is a cool little collectible piece. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Next guitar. So, picking up the pace here now, what uh, what you probably came here to see. These are my two uh, Dean from Hells. This is a Chinese model, and this is a Korean model. Can you guess which one I prefer? Yes, the Chinese one. For one simple reason. The neck on this one is absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't know why. They're supposedly the same. Uh, but they're really not. Uh, the neck on this feels really, really special. It's insanely fast. It plays like butter. Uh, I know I said that, said that about a lot of my guitars, but this one is genuinely one of the best guitars I've ever owned when it comes to the neck. <clears throat> got this dirt chip on the used market and it plays absolutely fantastic. The only issue I have with this guitar is uh, the toggle switch. It's really sensitive to just flip into the mid position. Uh, I'm guessing this is something that I have to do a video about. How to change out the electronics and stuff. Which is also something I want to focus this channel on. It's like repair and setups. Other than that, <coughs> have the Bill Lawrence pickups, um, license photos, which works really well on this one. Not all license photos are made the same, but this one is made really good. Yeah, has whatever you need. Fine bag fan, obviously. It does the job. Sounds Pantera, plays Pantera. And you can take a beating. 
This one has a lot of chips in its paint and it's a bit worn and stuff. Not like Dimes one at all, but yeah, love this one a lot. Coming over to the other one, the Korean made one. Here's also a slight difference from the other one. This one has a much, much sharper profile on the back of the neck. It's more like a V. But it tapers off a bit to the higher frets, where it's a little bit more flat and it's a more V-shape-ish up here. Uh, again, same configuration as the other one. Uh, on paper, these are the exact same guitars, but holding them, you would know that, or not maybe not holding them, but playing them, you would notice a difference. Not so much in tone, but in playability. I have set this one up to the best of my knowledge, so it plays almost as good as that one, but not quite. Yeah, love them to death. Throw roses, dive bombs, all that jazz, everything good in the world. Dean's from hell. Next guitar. Okay, guys. So this, Dean, Dean Triple X, 30th Anniversary Edition, made in Korea. Looks and plays amazing. Uh, standard ML configuration, uh, double volume, one tone. Looks great. Love the finish, love the burst, I love the top on it. Uh, it's also the only ML that I own that doesn't have Floyd Rose. So <clears throat> it gets a lot of use for that reason and that reason alone. Next up, this is a Dean Warbird. Also one of the few Deans that I own that doesn't bear anything to do with uh, Dimebag Daryl. This is a separate model. Really nice guitar, it's actually really really heavy. Like all MLs are a bit heavy, but this one I think is made of mahogany or something because it's really dense, really heavy. It's much heavier than the Triple X or uh, the Dean from Hells. <coughs> No brand, Blood Rose. It's probably a uh, licensed. Yeah, it's licensed, but it doesn't bear any branding. Uh, tuners on this are nice. Pickups are really nice. But what makes this guitar is, as always, the neck. The neck on this has had an amazing setup, and I absolutely love it. Um, another thing I don't like about the toggle switches on on Deans. I don't know if this is something that just happens but this one also is if you have it in the bridge position it's really easy to flick it back up into the middle position like you can do that while playing you can be playing you can be hammering on with the photos and it will all of a sudden just boop fall back to this position by itself that's also something that I'm considering doing it's changing out the toggle switch on this guitar as well so other than that it's an ML it's a Dean it's made in Korea Rubber tuners, block inlays, everything beautiful. So this, all of you probably know what this is. This is a Korean made Dean, far beyond driven, time back Daryl signature. This is the first of two Deans that are behind me, that are, that's not mine. This one belongs to my wife. It's uh, a fabulous guitar. Uh, for some odd reason, which I haven't figured out yet, the neck pickup on this guitar doesn't work. And it didn't work when we bought it either. We, we bought it used, unseen, unplayed. The uh, description was that it was a perfect guitar in mint condition, except that the neck pickup doesn't work. And that's actually true. Everything else is spotless on this guitar. No nicks, no blemishes, no nothing. Just a hairline crack in the paint here, just by the binding, just in the clear coat. Other than that, this thing looks brand new. Uh, doesn't have any wear and tear. As always, Grover tuners, licensed flood rows, uh, dime bucker, double volume, single tone. Yeah. This will also be on the workbench for another video. Or you have to dive deeper and try to figure out what's wrong with this pickup or just throw it out and replace it. 
So yeah, there it is. The Dean Far Beyond Drip. So this, another iconic time bag guitar. Uh, the Dean Time Slime. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Spec-wise, it's uh, almost identical to the uh, Far Beyond Driven. The uh, reason I say that is I know that this one have had uh, electronic swaps. So, even though it looks the same, the pots and the toggle switch are not the same. These are... Um, I don't know if they're 250 or 500k pots. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're not the original ones. But Sound-wise, sound pretty much exactly the same. This is also a Korean model, Grover Tuners. This is the only Dean I have that is set up for drop C tuning. All the previous Deans up till this point have been either uh, E standard or uh, E flat standard tuning. This one is set up for drop C, just because when Sometimes D standard and drop D is just not enough. You have to go for drop C. So, yeah, well, not much really to say about it, really. Love it, of course. The index, as I've said many times now, I think they're um, I can't fault them. I really love them. <clears throat> so, yeah, Dean Dine Slime. Absolutely love it. Yeah, so this is the next guitar. This is a Dean ATF 3000. It's also made in Korea, like uh, most of my Deans. <clears throat> I love this guitar, especially for its aesthetics. It has the uh, mother of pearl, probably mother of toilet seat uh, binding around the body. It has a curved top. It's not flat like most of the other Deans. And also the jack placement is on a different location, it's down here, rather than down here. It has... Uh, this one actually has an original Floyd Rose, because this one has been upgraded once. Uh, other than that, it's completely original. Um, no damages whatsoever, it's in near mint condition. Plastic is still on the two of the three covers on the back. Um, yeah, sounds really good. This one does not have the toggle switch problem that several other of my guitars have. I keep this one tuned to D standard, just because, um, you know, you need that as well. Why not? Yeah, another Dean. Love it. Beautifully built. Highly recommend it. Now, we come to one I believe many of you, at least on Instagram, have been looking forward to seeing a little bit better video of. This is not an official Dean. It started out that way, but uh, this paint job is a custom paint job by my friend uh, Daniel. I'll leave a link down to his uh, YouTube down below. He makes a lot of custom work. Really cool videos, you have to go check him out. This started life out as a uh, Razorback explosion. <clears throat> when I bought it, it was chips on all the points of the guitar. Headstock was broken. Uh, the guy who sent it to me even sent it with uh, the tremolo arm to the Floyd Rose on. So when the lid of the guitar case was slammed shut, it actually broke the Floyd Rose. That's why there is no Floyd Rose on this guitar as of now. What I'm considering doing is getting a futon uh, photos for this in red, white and blue. The reason I wanted to do this paint job was because collectors value, I guess, I don't know. Uh, for me, this is a tribute guitar to Dimebag and uh, Pantera's music and nothing else. It's not a political statement at all. Uh, I know he played Southern Flag guitars because of his love for Leonard Skinner, which, which also did that back in the day. It's a controversial piece, I am fully aware. Um, but just look at it. It's beautiful. Seymour Duncan pickups, Timebucker, of course. Um, yeah. Can't wait to get this one put back together. I'm also actually 
thinking about changing the tuner, tuners to red, white and blue locking tuners. And also uh, maybe changing the pickup rings to something in the, the match the color scheme. Or I'll just keep them as is, I don't know. This one is uh, affectionately called the uh, Great Southern Trend Kill, which I don't know if it shows up on camera, but you can read it there. And also on the back here, it's the little signature from Daniel, his uh, company, Firestar Customs, who did uh, all the paint on this. And he also conveniently kept the original serial number. So this started out, as I said, as a Korean. Korean made the Razorback with the explosion on it, but it was so broken and uh, messed up that it over time warped into this. And Daniel did an, did an amazing job by fixing all the damages, sanding everything to perfection and uh, giving it an amazing paint job. So there is the Dixie Rebel tribute. Also Korean made. British flag, Union Jack, licensed third rows, Timebucker, uh, Seymour Duncan, something in the neck, three way switch, same setup as every other um, Razorback, as far as I know. This one is my latest to the collection. I haven't done anything with it since I got it, I haven't even actually played it, and I'll show you why. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the tremolo is way off. Reason I haven't played it yet is because I'm planning plan on shooting a video for people that I don't know, maybe not that comfortable with Floyd Roses. Like if you get a guitar and the Floyd Rose looks like this, I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's tilting quite a lot. But this guitar is gonna be in a upcoming setup video to show you guys how to redeem these issues. I have not even looked in the back of the cavity to see if there's some blockage going on or anything because it it does only move one way and I don't know why but that's a mystery to find out later as I said I just got this guitar so have not looked into it for now it will hang on the wall and you will see this in a later video when we all find out together next guitar this is one of two uh, seven string racer backs that I own. The other one will not be featured in this video because it's in a huge pile of parts. There's nothing on it um, <clears throat> It's an ongoing restoration which may or may ever be complete now What I will say is that to my knowledge Dimebag never played seven string guitars in any significant fashion So I think this guitar probably is pushing the dime thing a little bit far but nevertheless, it is a die model. It has a licensed Floyd Rose, same configuration as every other Razorback. Active Seymour Duncan pickups, um, Grover tuners made in Korea, Razorback inlay. Um, sounds incredible, but this I don't get why. This guitar feels twice as heavy as a regular Razorback and I can't understand really why because it's only an extra string so okay there is a little bit more saddle and a little, little bit more Floyd Rose and a little bit more neck but this one is for what it is really really heavy uh, it doesn't have a big block either as far as I can see on the back of the tremolo here so the weight doesn't come from there uh, yeah this guitar, I have to be honest, whoops, I have to be honest and say this is not a guitar I use a lot. I have it uh, as a part of the collection and realistically I could not justify buying another one just for the collection again. Maybe if it was another model, maybe, but 7-string Razorback, mm, nah, not really. I'm a fan of the guitar, I just don't use it that much. Next guitar. So, once again, we've got a couple of twins for you. Um, the eagle-eyed of you may notice some differences, but we'll go through them as we go along. <coughs> Sorry about that. First thing first, this is mine. This is my uh, Dime Slime Razorback, and this is my wife's Dime Slime Razorback. She loved this one so much, she wanted one for herself. I bought one for her, 
and uh, now we both together have two. So that's perfect. Everybody wins. Razorbacks for everybody. So, this one, standard configuration, Dimebucker, Zebra pickup, everything I we said on all the other guitars. Except this one has a slight of a more V shape on the back of the neck. Um, this is a little bit sharper than the Razorbacks we have talked about up until this point. This, uh, this does not have the toggle switch problem that I have noticed on some of the MLs. And uh, yeah, they're both in near mint condition. I could find, probably find some blemishes on them if I looked really closely, but haven't done that. Let's take a look. Both of them are set up with Grover tuners. <clears throat> but my wife's... has the Dimebucker and DMT pickup configuration, which is one of two things I know are different on these two guitars. The other thing is the marking on the back. You see mine has the traditional Korean US serial number style. And my wife's has the Dimeback silhouette made in Korea marking. Other than that, these two guitars are identical. There's no denying that. They are probably made in the same factory, they have the same font on the serial number, everything is the same, except for one pickup and a silhouette of dime bag of, on one of the guitars. So I'm guessing that these are different production runs, but from the same company, under the same license. So there you have it. Two time slime Razorbacks. Yeah, so next set of twins. These are two identical Dean Razorback Cemetery Gates models. They're both made in Korea. They have the exact same setup as most other Dean Razorbacks made in Korea. So spec wise, they are exactly the same as a lot of other ones. These two have one slight difference, and that is in the color of the paint. One of them. I don't know if it will show up on camera, but one of these are a little bit more blue-ish than the other. Otherwise, they are exactly what you expect from a Razorback. They are relatively light. They have uh, extremely flat and nice fretboards. They sound amazing. Um, Timebucker, license for rows, Grover tuners. You've seen it before on several other Razorbacks. There's nothing special going on with these, other than that they are amazing, as always. So, I think we have two more to cover for today, and I think this video will be, will be long enough as it is. Next guitar, please. Last, uh, or second to last Razorback of the day. This is a Razorback Dime 10K. <coughs> Sorry about that. 10K. It has a plastic diamond plate top cover. I know ple some people will change these for real like diamond plate, but why in the world would you make the guitar even heavier than it is? Because this is actually a heavy Razorback. Uh, it's a 10,000 series commemorative Razorback, as stated on the back. Let's see if I can't try to show you. I don't know how clearly that comes up on camera. As I said, I'm new to this, so... Don't judge the camera work too hard. This is uh, also for me more of a collector's piece than actually a guitar that I play. I do play it, I just only play it at home. Never take it out anywhere. Uh, only small damage on the guitar is a thin, thin hairline crack in the paint right up there. But I'm thinking actually of getting that sorted out professionally, like having it sanded down just to clear coat and just fade it in to remove it all together. Mirror inlay on the 12th fret. Otherwise, again, it's the same as any other. It's made in Korea. Simon Duncan's licensed photos. Plays like a champ, stays in tune. No problems. Looks great. I really love this one. Isn't she pretty, pretty? Now, last and final guitar for this episode, guys. Last guitar, 
This is a real love-hate relationship for me, this guitar. I love a flying V, I'm not just sure I like this flying V. Uh, it's a Razorback V in sparkle red. I got this guitar by not purchasing this guitar. I got this guitar because I really wanted to buy uh, the dime, um, oh, dime bolt, the slime bolt, I mean. I wanted uh, that really bad and the guy who was selling it said, hey, hey, I have this flying V as well. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not really interested in the flying V. Uh, that's okay. And then everything shifted over to, you can't buy the um, slime bolt without buying this as well. So you can either buy both or buy none. And um, in fear of not getting the slime bolt, I broke down and bought them both. Uh, Spec-wise, again, the same as any other Razorback. Uh, it plays really good. Uh, I don't mind it. I'm not... I'm just not too stoked on uh, a Razorback V, to be honest. Um, I know that had Dime been alive today, you know, we probably played every single type of guitar, so... In, in, in the context of Dimebag, I don't think that matters too much. But when it comes to Flying V, I'm actually more of a Randy Rhodes, uh, Gibson Flying V type of guy. Um, I think that's a little bit too much. I would like the Annihilator Epiphone as a replacement for this, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's a little bit flashy, glitters a little bit, uh, but can't hate on it either, I'm just not quite sure that I'm as, as sold about this guitar as several other that I own, so. Well, that's all for this video. Remember to follow, like and subscribe, all that shit, yada yada yada. And you'll see when we get to work on the Ultra 3 and several other of the guitars you've seen here today will show up on a workbench in a future video for all of you to enjoy. So, thank you for watching. Have a good one.